Welcome to the 12th annual University of Northern Iowa Mini Sumo Robotics Smackdown. My name is Paul Shand. I'm the head of the physics department here at UNI. This year's competition promises to be breathtaking and brutal. The Mini Sumo robots are always ready to rumble, and we look forward to an action packed and entertaining event. Over the past year, much has been written about the effect that advanced artificial intelligence and robotics will have on employment in the future. Over the past 40 years, automation and robotics have displaced millions of mostly blue collar workers in the manufacturing sector. Rapid advances in artificial intelligence threatens to do the same to white collar workers. Knowledgeable people have speculated that job losses will be so severe that governments will have to provide a universal basic income to their citizens to keep them fed and occupied. I don't believe American civilization as we currently know it would survive such an arrangement. Jobs contribute in large measure to self-worth. Without them, society will surely decay. In any case, I don't see how the reality of a universal basic income would come to pass. As a famous economist tirelessly explains, in the economy of a nation, your spending is my income and my spending is your income. If jobs disappear en masse, large numbers of people would have no income to purchase goods and services, thus businesses would have reduced income and would therefore pay less taxes. Hence, governments would have diminished income. Where would the funds to provide a basic income to everyone come from? A universal basic income model could work as a replacement for current welfare schemes. Some countries are in fact already trying this. However, it seems practically impossible if a large fraction of the employable population is jobless. My belief is that advancements in robotics and artificial, and artificial intelligence will indeed lead to job losses in more areas of the economy. But this destruction of jobs will be offset by creation of other jobs in the areas where the creativity and cachet of human beings cannot easily be replaced, for example, in design and personal services. Yes, we will need to coexist with advanced robots and artificial intelligence, but they will not replace us. Actually, we can't afford to let that happen. Let me take this opportunity to thank Keith Kennedy and the audiovisual production crew, Rick Seeley, Instructional Technology Research and Development Coordinator and his coworkers, Brian Beardsley and the other Malka Union staff members, and everyone else at UNI who has contributed to this event. Now it's my very, very great pleasure to introduce Dr. Dale Olson, who has spearheaded the planning, organization, and execution of this great event from its inception. Let us give a very, very warm welcome to Dr. Dale Olson. We're deviating slightly from the script here. My apology to the uh, production crew, but um, thank you, Paul. And I want to take this opportunity to also give some credits and appreciation to the production crew. The, the folks who produced this live on the internet broadcast are associated with the University of Northern Iowa Educational Technology and Media Services uh, Department, which is headed by Dr. Melanie Abbas. And so we'd like to say thank you to her for permitting this to happen. And then um, the folks who are actually doing the heavy lifting especially include Rick Seeley, who is here today and running the, the broadcast system. And he's been assisted every year 
by Keith Kennedy, who has made input but isn't available to be here today, and Todd Hyungs and Denny Reimer, who I have now been associated with doing this event for, I think, 12 years. So I'm getting to know these folks reasonably well. And Joe Marchesani, who is the video production manager and, uh, and who has been a personal friend for many years. Then I do want to just quickly give a credit to, we have, to our camera crew. We have a three camera operation, and these are UNI students, Tim Sheevy, Alan Oxley, and Sam Skvor, a good Scandinavian name. So thanks to the students who are involved also. Then there's one, one additional credit that I can't really express enough, maybe, maybe two, but we have in our course, this, this event is based on a robotics course, one credit, we meet each spring, one night a week, and students come together, typically 10 to 15 students, and each builds a small robot doing mechanical work, assembly work, programming, soldering circuits. It's a very broad gauge course, and it is populated partly by my hard work going around every fall toward the end of the semester visiting introductory classes showing off the robots. It's not populated as a requirement, so it's novel in that effect, in that sense, and it's great because here we have an assembly of students wanting to do something challenging and creative, and they're there because they elected to come, and that's pretty unusual in a college class, but, you know, at least in an introductory level class. So I like that a lot. And so this semester we've had 11 students building robots and they range from computer science, physics, biology, uh, and you'll meet them when we get to that part of the event. Um, but the student that I want to give the real credit to then is the teaching assistant in that course, Ethan Hunter. He was a student year before last. He's a computer science major. Last year he served as the teaching assistant and great resource during last year's competition. And again this year, Ethan, if you could just wave your hand and I don't know if there's any way to get, you're going to see Ethan on camera a lot. He has been the backbone of putting this operation together, getting the equipment here, arranging that the robots that come, now I'll mention, the event does involve robots built by persons who are not part of the class. And just quickly, the history of the event was that back in about 2005, a physics alum, Randy Dumsey, who started his own microcontroller, custom microcontroller computer building company, had this idea. He wanted you and I to have robotics, and he offered to help get it started. And he led the classes initially, the one that I'm talking about and that has brought robots here, from, his, from a video monitor live on the internet. So that was possible because of the internet. And he led the class each year from 2006 through, to, I think, 2013, when it wasn't able for him, it was not possible for him to continue. But he would be up here in Cedar Falls at this podium and being the MC for this event. Then for the last year, three years, Keith Kennedy took over, and then this year, I will introduce shortly our new MC, Patricia Higby. Okay, so that's a little bit of the big picture. Um, I'm wanting to note then that we have 11, I'm sorry, 12 robots that will compete built by the 11 students in this year's class, and you will meet those students and their robots. And we have 13 visiting robots, five of them coming from on the UNI campus and eight of them from off campus. Four robots came from Los Alamos, New Mexico, built by two by Nathan Burnside and two by Alan Sines. One robot has been shipped from Fort Wayne, Indiana, expert built by Rick Brooks. And expert has been a very important part of our competitions, at least 
I'm going to say for 10 years, and he's won the event three times. And then three more robots built by another person who really deserves a credit, Mike Dvorsky, an engineer from Peoria, Caterpillar, who brought up, personally driving up here yesterday, three robots. And he's been here now three years in a row, and it's a very valuable part of our, our, our competition. So I think that's enough background other than the idea quickly, what is Mini Sumo Robotics? I'll just say some of the essential features. You see, you might have seen, I guess not yet, but there is an arena. I don't know if the camera crew can give us a quick shot of the arena, but two robots battle like sumo wrestlers. And uh, they each try to push the other off the arena. Randy Dumsey had the idea, this is kind of a natural human game Kids play it, king of the hill, so it should be attractive to lots of different people, but do it then in the context of robotics. And the structure of the event is we're gonna have a best of three, so to, for a robot to be completely out of the competition, it must be pushed off, or as sometimes is the case, it must drive itself off, of the arena uh, four times, right? So it's gonna be a best of three uh, match, we can call it, and it has to get pushed off once. Then we go again for a best of three, and one of the robots, if it again gets pushed off, would be the loser, and the other one would be the winner. But basically, it's best of three. There could be a necessity of three goes at it, uh, you know, three, three, battles, you could say, between the two robots. Okay, so it's a best of three competition, and that's the main thing you need to know, and then we always have to figure out all the details, who touched off first. We'll have a lot of eyes on the arena, and we're gonna have instant replay, and that's gonna be fun, and this all will be recorded on a YouTube, and on a video that will go up onto YouTube, I am told, within 24 hours. That'll be a new record, and that'll be just wonderful, because then I will expect my students in this robotics class to write a report, and they must make reference to some of the things that happened in the event that they can see in the video. So we'll hope that that can happen, and we'll be helping everyone, including our new MC, know exactly what the rules are as we proceed because there's a lot of details and they can be explained as we move forward. So I'd like to turn this over now to Patricia Higby, this year's MC. Thank you, Dale. I'm happy to say I'm a physics alum from the class of 1973, back in the time of the dinosaurs. <laughs> At that time, Dale Olson was still breaking the, um, into new frontiers. Um, I took the very first holography class that we had back in uh, about 72, 73, and uh, met my future husband there. So it was kind of an interesting deal. Um, anyway, today's competition is actually going to be two competitions. We're going to begin with the visiting robots and they'll be head to head until we get a winner of the visitors. And then we'll start over with the UNI robotics class until we get a winner there. And then for the final competition, we will have the top two of both categories, visitors and the class students coming together head to head for the final championship. And uh, I think that's about where we need to begin. Um, Oh, all right. Takashi Yasuda, my, okay, Takashi Yasuda also should have been credited. He's a physics department adjunct faculty member and has been helpful every year. And I just didn't have your name written down, Tak, so I just <laughs> didn't remember you. But he's going to be helping figure out who's on deck and where are those folks that are on deck. So right now, that would be Zuman and Zippy, and we can point that out, that will be available on the monitor. All you have to do, students, and and assistance is keep your eye on the monitor and you'll know who's supposed to be up. And, uh, and then Pat will announce who's on deck as soon as it becomes visible, but I think she'll be able to figure that out one way or another. And, and we'll go 
searching with help from talk to find the people that are supposed to be ready to go next. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna call up our first two uh, robots and their robotic masters. And so if we can have Mike Dvorsky, please. And let's see, um, Faiza uh, Jahanmarie. Now I'm a little concerned that we don't have enough girls in this. And so I'm really glad to see that we've got Faiza here. To begin, we're going to ask, go ahead and hold your robots and bow respectfully to your opponent. Fantastic. And now they will place the robots down within the white circle. They have to be between the edge of the white circle and one of those uh, two parallel lines at the center of the circle. And then you're gonna hear this a lot today. Don't start yet. This is a test. We go three, two, one, go. And on go, they press the button to, get the, uh, to start the robots. The robots have a slight time delay, which gives our robotic masters a chance to step away and give the judge and the cameras a really good view of the competition. And I'll, I'll also interject, they need to then step back to the mark that is marked onto the carpet so they won't be in the way of cameras and other judges and so on. All right, are you ready? Here's our first competition. Three, two, one, go! All right, it looks like Zippy has been pushed off of the competition. And so the winner there we call, of this very oh wait, first I, one and I have to officially start is Zuman. the competition. So here we go. This is the best two out of three, and so they are going to place their robots again. Dale, we're waiting for you to Not yet. No, nope. they they don't have to come over till everything is done. We're waiting. So. I'll let you say you're ready. <laughs> are you ready? Have you got it entered? Okay. No, no I, it's okay. I, I, I will, I guess I can try to. All right. Let's Three, see okay. two, one, go. There we go. I've got it marked. Ah. Oh, it looks like, I can't read it. Which one is off? Z Zippy I, was so, off a second So we time. call those Yukos. So the first, first event was led to a Yuko for Zuman, now a second for Zuman. And then I have to So we have Zuman score. winning, and Zuman will move on to um, face, I believe, Artemis um, later today. Okay, good, good try by Zippy. Did you notice they're not really very much like big sumo guys? Uh, the competition has gone to smaller, faster, and sneakier, not just necessarily who can push the most. Okay, so next up, we have Blumen and Mystery. Right, then we want so Mike Dvorsky is coming back with his uh, robot Blumen, and Mystery is Ethan Hunter. Bow, please. Excellent. And I'm wondering why Zuman didn't appear in round two. We'll give Dale a moment. Okay, well, I think we're okay, but. <laughs> it's more than just paper. He's got to press the right button there. So we'll just give him a moment to do that. Um, for those of you who are not aware of it, um, Mike Dvorsky, drove in from Peoria, Illinois, and brought these um, sumo robots to be in the competition. Uh, Mike, how many years have you been doing this? I've been doing uh, sumo robotics for 15 years. 15 years with sumo robotics. And as I talked with him earlier, he got started with his son. So that's very interesting. Dale, are you ready now? 
Yes. All right. Place your robots and three, two, one, go. Oh my gosh, it was a quick punch by Blumen. Yuko Blumen. Yuko to Blumen. Mystery got punched out pretty quickly there. And now we're ready for the second of best two out of three. Are you ready, Dale? Yep, absolutely. Okay, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> I think we're more, oh, punched yeah. out again. <laughs> All right. So, Blumen. So, Yuko, Yuko and we'll call it Match to I think we're more Blumen. And we've got to elevate that score. And I'm happy to and see the instant replay because that was pretty darn quick. It's great that we had an instant replay on that. Okay, um, as soon as Dale is ready, we'll. Yes, move we are on. ready. And, and we, so we our third group is going to be Ghost and Little Devil. Will their masters please bring Ghost and Little Devil to the circle? Remember to bow to each other. Oh, excellent. Okay, this one is going to look a little different. We've got some flags here. As I said, it's evolved. It's not just a big mass anymore. They've gotten smaller, faster, and sneakier. And so these flags are um, kind of a diversion, diversionary tactic here. Dale, are we ready? Oh, yeah, we're ready. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, there we go. You oh. call ghost. A uh, slight repair here for ghost, it looks like. Was there an issue? No. No, okay. All right. <laughs> We're ready for the second, two out of three. That was uh, one win for ghost. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. And Ghost is waving his flags. Oh, uh, and Ghost pushes it off again. Little Devil is going to have to get a little bit different strategy, I think, there. We should point out the little robot, Little Devil, uh, is a four-wheeled robot, so it is unusual for a UNI-generated robot. It's, it's a... All the robots basically in the class are based on servo motors that are... are modified from model airplane motors that control the ailerons and so on, and, and a higher level of robot, such as Ghost, is just ro motors with a motor controller. So that also is what Little Devil is, and it's one of our first efforts to move to that, that level. Okay, okay. and uh, if you would roll the screen up, please, Dale. Okay. All right. Um, well, um, no, give me a moment here. Okay. Um, let me just go down. And make sure we see. So round round four is Newman versus Expert, and that's Mike Dvorsky and whoever will be operating Rick Brooks's robot Expert. Okay, okay so Expert Ethan, Ethan is uh, built by Rick Brooks, who's from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, he has sent it in. And it looks like we have Ethan is going to operate it for Rick Brooks. So Rick, if you're watching now, here we go. Bow, please. Thank you. Place your robots. We are going live, so we're hoping that Rick Brooks is watching this at this moment. Three, two, one, go. Step aside to your X's, please, so that the judges can see. Oh, it's a little sneaky attack there. OK. So that would be a Zumo to Newman, is that correct? Step aside to your X's, please, so that uh, yes, the judge Newman was the, the winner there. Oh, oh no, you oh, so shall we do a redo? Do a I think we better do a do-over. Did, did expert actually? OK, I think then we do a do-over. Oh, OK, um, novice yeah. operator, and so this will be a do-over of Newman versus expert. This will be the first. Um, competition then. Are you ready? 
three, two, one, go. All right, we got some other lights flashing this time. Oh, uh, okay, match. he did better, but he still got pushed out by Newman. Okay, so you call Lights flashing Newman. this time. Here we go for the second competition. And three, two, one, go. Oh, we've got a fight going Whoa, there. That was Oh, what, what happens when they come back on and well, fight again? If he touched off, which I th <laughs> did he touch off on that first one? I think uh, so. But yep. you can see that they're both very competent robots. Yes. And I'm just going to ask Mike, you can comment. Technic technical point, the speed of a motor is proportional to the voltage. So the robots that visit normally are running on higher voltages like 12 volts. Our student robots run on what should be six, but we over voltage them to seven. But that is one of the reasons they're slower. What is your robot running on? Oh, here, come on over to the. Uh, here we Newman. go. Newman. Sure. Uh, Newman and Blumen both run on 11.1 volts. Okay. They're three cell lipo, and they're six volt motors. So I am almost doubling the voltage. Uh, okay, but it's a motor that can probably tolerate it better than a servo would. Uh, yes, the, the electronics in the servo would be destroyed by exactly. that kind of voltage. You'd have to take it out and have a custom H bridge yeah, to make yeah, that work. We'd get a lot of smoke if we tried that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, let me get this entered. So All right, everyone thank keep you. their eye on me. It's, it's Newman. Newman and was our winner. Okay. Now, I believe we're ready we're for um, Artemis we, versus we Zuman. Is that correct? We want number five, and we haven't got it yet. Just, just one second. We've got to find no, number. We've done f four. And, and, and we've got to have Grace, Grace oh, okay. by FISA and Goo by Ethan Hunter. Oh, excellent. Okay, so number five. And I'll zoom back. Faiza up. is coming back with her um, robot Grace. Just a second. I'm and sorry. Grace versus Goo. Here's Ethan again. Oh, you want to see who six is? Please bow. Okay, we'll go back down. Excellent. Place your robots. And uh, one moment, Dale is still working a little bit there. I, I think we're, okay, I need to open this one. Give me one moment. That's fine. Trying to get it to let go. There we go. And I think now we are set. All right, then. Three, two, one, go. Grace versus Goo. Oh, Grace was pushed out. So Goo is our Grace winner there. Grace versus Goo. So you call, you call Goo. Okay, please place your robots for the second round. And you'll notice that Goo is a little bit of a, at an angle. Ah, and so is Grace. Placement is kind of important for this. And these are um, uh, the larger, more sumo-sized robots we've got here. Three, two, one, go! They found each other. Oh! Goo is just a little bit more of a pushy guy here. <laughs> All right, you call and match to Goo by Ethan they Hunter. So that's I have correct. Awarded that match to Goo, Goo, and we will look now for round six. Yes. So we have finished round one, and um, I can't say that every student has competed yet, but now we are going to populate round the winners, round two, um, with Mystery by Ethan Hunter and Little Devil, also built by Ethan Hunter. 
Mystery is the first robot Ethan built during his year as a student, right? Oh, is it backwards? Mystery is the more recent one? Oh, okay. And I'll tell you later why I got them reversed. And Little Devil is his third robot, and he's been working on that just this year. Okay, you want to okay. okay. I think I have to. So this is first. Mystery versus Little Devil. Um, three, two, one, go. Okay, they've engaged. Oh, mystery pushes right. Little Devil off the mat. All right, so, so you call mystery. We would point out that potentially Little Devil could be one of the faster, zoomier robots, but we've had some sparks. We've had some <laughs> okay. sensor engaged. failures. We've had lots of issues because this is a new robot and we're just learning about. And, uh, so it's fun to have somebody a little bit... Uh, you have some mystery in this, too. Okay, <laughs> all right. The mysteries have been with Little Devil. Yes. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. All right, Little Devil, let's see if you can counteract mystery here. Oh, he tried to a, do a, a around-the-back maneuver. Oh, there we go. But mystery pushes very effectively. Mystery has pushed him so again. So a second Zumo and match counteract mystery. To mystery. We oh, will try to do a, a around the select mystery and scores. And and we're running we're running little devil. Okay, you want round we need to see round seven, so let me pay attention to that and then I'll make a comment. There's five, six, um, four. Six. Where's seven? Am I? In? I think we're missing. I think seven's maybe down here. I'm not well, they're getting that finished up. Let's just talk a little bit of basic physics here. Force, as Newton told us, is mass times acceleration. So you've got a couple of options there. You can go for a massive robot, or you can go for acceleration. I guess the question is, do you want to get hit by a slow-moving bowling ball? or a faster moving baseball. And so uh, we see kind of a variety here. We've seen some small ones that go with quicker acceleration. We go some larger ones that maybe move a little slower. Um, but it's very interesting. And then you introduce this idea of sneakiness, the, the programming that allows them to uh, move around the mat and uh, try to get to their opponent and push them from the side. So there's a lot of complications uh, involved in this. All Are right. we ready? We ha well, we have finally found event seven. We are starting round two. These will be two robots who have not lost yet a match. They are Artemis, who had a bye. Artemis is the overall winner from last year's match, built by Nathan Burnside, last year's SmackDown, the 2016 SmackDown built by Nathan Burnside from Los Alamos, and the other is Zuman, built by Mike Dvorsky, who moved into the winner's bracket of round two by winning over Zippy. So we'll make this bigger then. Okay, and, and uh, who do we have running the Artemis um, robot? Okay. I'm Brent Treeweiler. I'm in the robot. Okay, great. We have a volunteer from the UNI Robotics class. Brett is running and the um, Artemis for that. Nathan Burnside. Let's hope that Nathan is watching this live. Are you ready, Dale? Yeah, I'm, I am ready. All right. So, three, two, one, go. Oh my goodness, there was an example of good acceleration. Artemis pushed um, Zuman off the uh, ring there. So uh, Yuko. one Yuko for Artemis. Artemis. You see why he's a robot that could take it all. <coughs> okay. 
Three, two, one, go. Oh, another so, excellent push off the mat. Zuman made a rather valiant effort to get around behind Artemis. It was not just a, you know, a pushover match. So, zoom, zoom, Yuko and match to Artemis. And then I just want to comment. Zuman, you've seen two robots, Grace and Zuman, that are look a little bit alike. This is a, a sumo robot kit. I've got it right now, right? <coughs> Artemis that is made by Adafruit, and so if there are any educators, robotics educators, they might want to pay attention to these little track robots, because they are fairly inexpensive, and Mike Dvorsky actually taught a class on using these kind of robots down in Peoria, so it's worth noting that robot, and that at Adafruit one can find a kit or a completely assembled version of that robot. Okay, if we could get uh, Blumen and Ghost on deck, please. Blumen by Mike Dvorsky. Ghost by Alan Science. And Alan is also from Los Alamos, New Mexico. Not Adafruit. It's excuse me. I need to correct. Who what do I we said. have running? Um, We're using an Adafruit resources a lot. My name is Riley. But it's I'm operating Palo Ghost. Loot. Okay, we've got Riley, who's operating Ghost for us here. And we had a nice bow. So this is Ghost versus Blumen. And Three. I will be oh, just ready a in a moment. And then I am ready. Three, two, one, go. Ghost versus Blumen. Ghost is waving a flag. Oh, uh oh! I, th I think there's a um, there's a starting error. I think we need to consider a do, do over because I'm not sure Ghost, what happened. Ghost did not start. Okay, but there was a uh, went in reverse. I think the yeah. the start buttons on Ghost and El Monitor are very small, and it's a little bit hard to be certain. There, are we okay? Do you want to We'll do, do a do over. Riley, do you agree that maybe there wasn't a adequate start? Okay, okay so, so let's try it again. We'll do a do-over. And uh, which button are you going to push this time? Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one, go. Ghost is waving his flags. Ah, the flag was oh, absolutely 100% effective. The flag lured ah, the, flag the other was robot oh, the circle. Yeah. Ah, the flag I'm was sorry, what did you say? absolutely. That's the first ah, time the I've flag seen flags actually work in competition. But that, that was <laughs> there okay. we go. So Z you call to Ghost. Ghost faked him out. <laughs> I hope Alan Sines is pleased and enjoys seeing that, that match on the video. All right. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Blue Men versus Ghost. Ghost waves the flag. He puts it down. All this time he was oh. not fooled. So now we have a Yuko to <clears throat> Blue Men versus Ghost. Ghost and waves the flag. This is the, the first year Blue Men has visited. This is a brand new robot, I believe. So we had one <laughs> win each. All the best two out of three. This will be the deciding point. Will Blumen see ghost or ghost's flag? <laughs> Three, two, one, go. He's waving his flag. Uh -oh. I nope. think he saw the flag, but somehow he also saw the robot. Yep, so, so we have a, two wins for Blumen there. Okay, so Zumo, Yuko to Blumen. His and flag. match to Blumen, and there you saw some very high-level robotics, and submit scores. There we go. Okay, so now we're at round, round two, event number nine, El Moditor by Alan Sines again, and Newman by Mike Dvorsky, is that right? Yes. And then you want to see 10. So, right? El Matador. 
I want to I want to correct something I said, Pat. Yes. The the small tracked robots that we have two of here are made by Polalu. Polalu. That's the company that you order them from online. It's a well-known oh. electronics robotics website. Okay. Polalu. And El Matador is well named because matadors, you know, attract the bull with a red flag. So bow. Excellent. We have Ethan here uh, running Alan's motor, uh, robot for him. Get the right button. Are you ready, Dale? Yes. Three, two, one, <coughs> go! <coughs> Another flag waver. Oh. Whoa. Oh, we've lost a now wheel. Now we will have time out for technical adjustment. The, okay. the oh. Yuko goes to <coughs> I'm the flag waver. To replay on that. Yeah, who is it? El Matador, right? I think El Matador pushed him out. That's what I thought. But now El Matador has had uh, battle damage um, <laughs> because it lost a wheel. And Excellent the issue replay. is whether the, we've had this happen at least one other time. And the issue is can we f properly reattach the wheel? It might take a special tool that we don't have. <clears throat> It looks like the wheel is back on. Pat, I'm also noticing in my remarks, I meant, was going to mention, we have a little interlude here, that you are recently retired from UNI as the energy educator at the Center for Ener Energy, Energy and, and Environmental, environmental Education, education yes. which is a, a, a LEADS quality structure on campus. And I will be fully retired as of June. And this is our 12th year of doing this event, and physics has been having intense conversations about how and if we will be able to continue the event. And we're not going to say, yes, it will continue, or no, it won't continue, but it is sort of under discussion, let's put it that way. And that's worth saying here in this, in the, in this, in this uh, broadcast. And I would strongly encourage the physics department to continue the event with the help of volunteers yes. such as ourselves and who that, are recently retired. But of course, we also need someone to lead the course. So we're working on that too. And oh. this, this gives me another opportunity to do just a little bit of history related to how robotics came to UNI and to the physics department. It's, it's somewhat interesting. Randy Dumsey came to UNI in about 2003, I think, and approached the technology department and said, I'd like to help you guys get a, a robotics program going. There wasn't really anything at UNI at that time. And they had young PhDs that really couldn't drop their research and just switch over to an educational ro robotics activity. So Randy came back in 2014, and then finally he came back again in 2015. And I said then, all right, Randy, I'll step forward. And that's how we got it going. And um, at the beginning, there was significant pushback whether this was appropriate for a physics department whether it should be in physics as opposed to technology. But finally, physics, technology, and computer science got each a representative. And we got together and said, how can we make robotics flourish at UNI? And so Ben Schaefer and, and several other, other faculty members we don't have time to mention. We're in business again. But that's how this evolved until finally everybody's pushing hard. Yeah, let's do this, and let's, let's develop it further. So. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, this is the second round. Matador was the winner of the first one. It's the best two out of three. Are you set? Three, two, one, go. Newman versus Matador. Matador raises his flag. Whoa. Oh, wow. Blumen pushes Matador off. Matador loses the flag in the process. So. Oh. I'll, that's a, an, a, an, an opportunity Matador. to Matador teach a technical detail about the rules of mini sumo 
if the flag had been pushed off accidentally, that would have been a loss for El Matador. Any part of your robot of more than a certain weight falls off and it then gets pushed onto the ground, that is a loss. Uh, you call for the opponent. So I'm going to give the match to El Matador. Oh, I'm sorry, Newman. There you see why I need somebody looking over my shoulder. Oh, it's one and one. There we go. That's why, okay. That's why I was confused. One and one. So now we have to undo the winner, and I'll, I'll correct the winner when it's appropriate. Okay. Thank you. All for right. The help. Best um, two out of three. Each one has won once. So three, two, one, go. Oh, that went to oh, El Matador. Oh, let's see the replay on that one, please. I think it was El Matador. I believe El Matador pushed Newman. We'll see. if we Do we have a, a rematch? But that, that's my judgment, unless somebody wants to challenge that. Okay, okay here we go. Okay, let's watch it here. El Matador versus Newman. We're all watching the replay. Yep. Yes. Very clear. Yes. El Matador receives the Yuko and the match. So we have completed event number nine. And for event 10, it'll be Apollo by Nathan Burnside. This is Ber Nathan's second robot. And Goo by Ethan Hunter. And it's worth mentioning, in last year's event, Apollo went dead on the arena each time that it competed. We'll try to find out what happens this year. Bow, please. 11. Excellent. Mm, there it is. No. Nope. I think I better do this. Okay. And we're getting an angled placement here on Goo. Apollo is back behind, almost onto the line. Three. Two, one, go. Oh, oh, it oh this is going to be a push again. match. All right, Apollo is a brick, and we don't know why this is happening, but it's like possibly electrostatic discharge, so we don't need to continue. So, it's Apollo. A, um, it's a Yuko to goo because yes. Apollo became. Immobile. Um, his that, lights were still on, though, on it, Apollo. It, it could not move. Apollo could not move. Okay. And it was not moving. So, So Nathan, if you're watching from Los Alamos, uh, here If we I go. could just stop for a second. Um, oh. Ethan, could we just confer just for a moment? Because this is, you know, it's not good. And I'd just like to chat with Ethan just for a moment. All right, well, they're doing that. The issue seems to be that um, Apollo has um, problems, I think, with an electrostatic discharge. Was that what they said last time? It starts out the match and stops midway, so, yeah. Could we do a, an experiment? Can we remove goo from the uh, mat and just experiment with Apollo to see if, if it uh, can work with this Possibly, but here's what we're going to do. Nathan Burnside also suggested that we try covering up one of his infrared sensors. Now, here he's working, and he's not dying. So, so without the opponent there, he works. We could put a box down. We had a box. It would be worth a try if we had a small cardboard box. Um, we usually have one. Oh, in all here we go. How about this box? That's metal. I don't. I don't like metal. I, I think. Um, there's a wooden box over here. What, can a, we use this one? A, a dry cup. If is, is there's a, like a water cup. I have no, a. No, no, it's too no? heavy. I don't want to put something. Okay. There we go. Eat, all there. right. Try that. We're doing an experiment here. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I think we should try it. Let's just give it another try. I don't think we need to change okay. anything. <laughs> All right. So I'm some. glad we tried these little experiments. And if he dies on the arena again, maybe it's just the first time. 
<laughs> he doesn't like the looks of goo. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. He didn't have any trouble that time. He was working that time. All right. So Zoom. now. Um, you call to Apollo. So are we going to count the first one as a Yuko to goo, or? Anybody want to offer a, an opinion? Um, Ethan, you want to offer an opinion. Do, was that first, should that first one have been a do-over? Do you have an opinion on that? I don't really. Technically, it started and was running and then died on the arena. Yeah, but technically, he, he lost. I think let's just let it go, and then we'll see what happens. Ideally, if everything's OK, he'll. Okay. He'll be so strong that he'll overcome that <laughs> obstacle. In the future, if it happens, maybe we'll give him a break, but not this time. <laughs> OK, so three, two, one, go. Oh, oh he okay. died. His lights are on, but he's not moving. I, I say, as I said, if it happens again, let's just uh, let's but give Goo let's, is Continue let's, to push him off, so. Let's give him a do a, let's give him a do-over. I think he's a robot that there's a technical problem. Unless you think that's not appropriate, if anybody else. You want to try it? Okay, we have another idea. And uh, we've talked quite a bit about why this is happening, and nobody's certain. There's about three or four ideas out there. Okay, so we're going to try it again. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. yeah. We, we covered up a sensor, and certainly not the opponent's sensor. Ethan, could you explain what oh, Nathan yes, suggested? Uh, we covered up the uh, infrared sensor that the remote connects to the stop uh -huh. remote. So we're wondering if there's extra light that may be getting into the sensor and causing it to stop on the arena. Because it is a sensor that is supposed to stop the right robot here. when it receives a signal. So that would be logical. And so we covered up the remote stop sensor. <laughs> yeah. Well, when he runs, he runs well. That's Apollo. Okay. So we need to, I need to give a, a, a Yuko to Apollo, the victory to Apollo. Congratulations and, to Nathan Burnside and, in Los and, Alamos, New and, Mexico. And I hope looking, you're watching. We're looking for the, the names of the next. Yeah. OK, we want number 11. We thought so, but there's 17. So we're going to have to go down. Here, that that was event ten. We need event eleven. Eleven is. is at the bottom. Uh, yep. Zuman by Dvorsky versus Grace. Uh, we're going to see Jahanami again. So come on down. Jahanmiri. Yes, excuse me, Jahanmiri. Faiza Jahanmiri. <clears throat> And Faiza, would you be able to talk to us a little bit later, maybe? <laughs> okay, yeah, fine. Okay. <laughs> Bow, please. Place your sumo robots. So here we have Grace, who is a big sumo robot, versus Zuman, the small, agile one. Let's see how it works. Three, two, one, go. Oh, Zuman has. <laughs> oh, well, luckily. Technical detail. If you touch off on the edge, if you're touching the. Oh, and look at what happened to. And Zuman, Zuman. eventually went off, but uh, maybe he just Did got Did Grace tired. touch off or not? Somebody else has to tell me. Faiza, were you touching the side or not? You were touching the side. I'm sorry. So that is a Yuko to Zuman, oh, who Zuman was still on the arena at that point. So, okay, but still, that was 
That was the stealth move where Zuma yeah. circled around behind her to the side and pushed Grace off. Three, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Yep. And again, Zoom and snuck off to the and, back and, and again, pushed that, Grace off. That is the Palaloo available robot that won. Zoom in, Yuko, and Match. And then we go to event number 12. If you would 12, scroll if we down, can find it. I believe um, it was down below. Right. I think it's right down here. But I can the post. Come on. It won't slide up, so I'll make it smaller. And there it is. Not yet. It won't click on. Number 12. It's coming. Or number 11. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ghost and Expert. Ghost by Alan Sines, Expert by Rick Brooks of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Ghost had a technical problem last year, seems to be doing well this year. Expert has won this event in the past, but we're thinking the competition level is elevating. So, okay. it's more so challenging. We hope that uh, Rick Brooks and Alan Sines is watching. Are you ready? Do you want to know next? Three, I, I two, one, go. Ghost waves his flag. Oh, it's a grudge match. <laughs> we, uh, do you have a clock for this? We're stuck. Oh, and we got a timer going. That has to stop quickly. No more than 10 seconds at the most. I think we right, just. Right, we're just going to wear out some batteries yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, let's just stop it. <laughs> it it might have started. I don't think it was changing, so. Oh, we have a dangling wire now. Okay. And that was inconclusive, and so the this current e bout has no Yuko. We'll have a replay, or a redo. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. Oh. Oh. It was okay. a turn, right? It In that case, Ghost just turned himself right off the off the circle. Any? Yeah, we we don't <laughs> oh. know how to explain it. I don't think we can. So we're going to give that to expert. That yes. That is. And we may a want Yuko to put Ghost a little further to the expert. center in case he does that circle and again. If we could be talking to Alan Signs, he might he have a tip for us. Back. But oh, I'm checking okay. my email just while we're mentioning it. So you had that first um, win to um, expert, I believe it was. Right. If Alan wants to send an email with an idea for <laughs> what we can do, it's OK. OK, they're going to move him a little bit closer to start. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Ah. ah, that time Ghost knocks Expert off. So we've got one and one. Yep. You call Ghost. Best two out of three. We're ready to begin. And we might mention Expert has random programs in there that are selected, probably from <gasps> among six or eight different oh, programs. Oh, okay. So he'll do something different every time he starts. That's interesting. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I think El Matador went dead on the arena. Or, or no, Ghost um, kind of stopped. He's, his wheels were spinning. Ah, but that's interesting. He finally did get him off. So that's a Yuko to expert, but what but happened? He's, he's I, still I, I, spinning, I so. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so the technical, yeah, go ahead. You want to explain, Ethan? Um, it appears that Ghost has or went dead problems on the with arena. his motors. The no, wheels Ghost, don't seem um, to be kind of stopped. As, well he's, he's as they should. Um, so he tends to stop on the arena when he's trying to turn. 
Okay, and it's not the wheel attachment to the axle, it's the actual motor itself. For some reason, that motor is not really spinning at the time it should be spinning. Okay. All right, thank All you right. for that analysis. So we'll I think that will help. Uh, we'll finish the scoring. This is a, uh, the, the second Yuko and the, the bout, I'll call it, go to expert. We're always struggling for the correct name. These are not rounds. That has a different name, of course. So we're in round two. We're in round two, and this is bout 12, using the language I've just suggested. And we need to go to bouts 13 and 14. We are in the, the round two competitors who have previously lost once, and so any robot that loses in, in these, e these bouts is done. And it's, uh, so it suggests that Ghost might at this point be out of the tournament. And next we have bout 13, Newman and Mystery. Newman and Mystery, please. So Ethan Hunter is coming back, as well as Mike Dvorsky. And they bow. I think they've bowed quite a bit to each other today. <laughs> and then we have Z and Jeff again. Yeah. Okay. Mystery, the one with the little bit larger robot. Newman, the smaller, more agile. And three, two, one, go. Okay, Newman just pushed Mystery out. Okay, so Newman is both fast and powerful. Yuko to Newman. Fast and sneaky, came around from behind. <laughs> yeah, fast and sneaky, right. Three, two, one, go. Uh, and again, right. Newman pushes Mystery off. He came in as we watched the in, uh, instant replay. Uh, he likes to come in, I think, from the side because yeah. the pushing is front to back. So he comes in and from the side. And Ethan, mystery doesn't have a side sensor. Is that right? Mystery is bare bones. Yes. So okay. he just said mystery is the bare bones it robot with is, no side sensor. And is sensor. that your second robot, though? But it's a bare bones robot. OK. All right. So that. Matt, that bout goes to Newman. I'll mark Newman as the winner, submit the score, and we're on to number 14, I think. About 14, we need to see it. We need um, to see check it. Check 13, did we do 13? Yes, the one we just finished. Great. So 14, Goo by Ethan Goo. and Zippy. Again, a Palalu track robot by Faiza. Jahan Miri. <clears throat> Are you ready, Dale? Yes, absolutely ready. Three, two, one, go! And Zippy! Oh, straight coming. head on head. And head on head, and Zippy didn't have the mass. Yeah, just. That is, the pile of the robot is based more on speed and stealth, definitely. They're, the robots are permitted to weigh 500 grams, and if you're a 300 gram robot, it's hard to keep your traction against a 500 gram robot. Okay, so one of the rules like of mini sumo is 500 grams. Sorry, go ahead, Pat. Uh, we're having a, a slight uh, fix over here, so it gives us a chance to say hello to you. And uh, how did you, I believe you're an engineer, is that correct? And how did you get into engineering? Um, well, I'm a bi biomedical engineer. <laughs> yes. Okay, I guess we're ready to begin again. So Gu had a little issue. And now three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Whoops, okay. Uh-oh. Did we have a kind of an uneven start? Or are we um, okay? She had to rearrange them. Shall we redo that start? Yeah, I think we'll do okay. a do-over. We'll redo that start. We'll Oops. have you. Uh, OK. Uh-oh. Did um, we have a kind of an uneven start? Or are we um, OK? Sh 
he's very uh, interesting sound-wise. Go ahead and start him. When, uh, when yes. I start oh, okay, I'll put my microphone down so you can hear him. Okay, uh, go place your robots. You got it where you want them to be. Three, two, one, go. Ah, there's a sing, a singing tone. He has a sing. It's a. He has a little song he sings. Yes. But it's a a to go. To goo. But goo is, pushed the zippy out. Is yes. that the? Is that the second yuko? Okay. Yes. So I, yes. I I was negligent, and now I've got goo at, with two yukos and the the victory. Uh, goo had a a technical problem, so there was a, a time period. That's why you, yeah. So oh, that he it, won one, and then okay. he had a repair, and then this and, is the and second. And this is it, though, right? Yes, this okay. is it. That's so it. I will just mention, you like the sound of, of, um, of let's see, that was uh, Zippy. Zippy has, has a little there sound. There will be a singing robot coming. Okay. Okay, but that's. I think Zippy has the um, charge. Ta-dum, ta-dum. <laughs> okay, we want, where, oh, we need to pull this down. One. Oh, so it should be up here. There's 17. All right, so we are back to the, now we are starting the semifinals. Okay. 17, right? We've done, oh, have we not done 16? 14. Oh, there we go. We have to do 15. 15 and 16. So we're in round three. We are populating all parts of round four, and we're going to proceed to 15, which is expert versus Zuman. So two, two, I think, evenly matched robots. That's my sense of this. These so are we have expert robots. from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Zuman, Mike Dvorsky from Peoria. <coughs> Three, oh, are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Expert versus Zuman, both tricky little robots. Okay, it looks yeah. like Expert has pushed Zuman off for the first. So uh, first you of call three, one, Expert. Go. Correct. Expert versus Zuman, both tricky little robots. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Well, and oh, oh expert there. also pushes Ex harder. Expert has a good, strong push there. Okay, so Yuko and match to expert. And Pat, I'm thinking of saying that each match has up to three bouts, <laughs> if you know what yes. I mean. Yes, yes, okay. it's best two out of three. And so now we have Goo versus Newman. Yes, and then. Goo versus Newman. Number 17, we're going to look ahead, is Artemis versus Blumen. Are you ready? Just one second. This is 16, Goo versus Newman, right? If that's it, I'm ready. Yes, we are. Three, two, one, go. Oh. At least Goo takes a good roll. <laughs> Yuko Newman. Correct. Oh. Three. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, Newman came from behind and pushed him right out. The so you call and match to Newman. Correct. Okay, and that was, that was, we'll call it match 16, and we're looking then for 17, Artemis and Blumen. That's correct, Artemis and Blumen. And remember, Artemis was the overall winner last year, and Blumen is a brand new robot brought from Peoria by Mike Dvorsky. So Nathan, if you're watching, and then we'll see how this works out. Are you ready, Dale? Oh, monitor, okay. 
Ready? Yes. All right. Three, two, one, go. Artemis versus Bloomin. Oh. Oh, this is good. We've got a spin going on. I think this is going to be limited to about 20 10, 10 to 15 seconds if there's yeah. no change at all. If my clock is at 3, 4, 6, 7. Oh, oh it changed. There we go. We did have a change. Blumen got Artemis off. Okay, so go. Yuko Blumen. Artemis. Versus Bloom. I'm not sure what happened at the very no. end there. Oh, but this you can watch is it good. on replay. And we've got a spin going on. I think this is going to be limited to about 10, 10 to 15. Okay. Excellent replay. We're slowing it down just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like. We don't know why that happened unless it was in his code that he circled too many times and he had some pr he just protection against said, that. He just said, I've had enough, I'm leaving. Okay. And then he just went off on his own. So that's something that the video will be helpful to, to Nathan Burnside try to diagnose that. Excellent. Okay. Um, is this the second one? Yep. Okay. Second. Best two out of three, and wow. three, two, oh, are you ready? Oh. Three, two, one, go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so that was... Artemis gave him a, a very quick okay. push off. So yes. it's Artemis, you go to Artemis, Here's the and, instant and replay. the That was Blumen. a very interesting one. Very quick and off, because he got him head on. Yeah. All right. This is it. Each has one win. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. And zoom. Uh, Artemis has a second You win. call Artemis. This gives me an opportunity to, first of all, award the, the match to Artemis, and then also comment. When Artemis, when Artemis arrived on campus, Ethan and I look at the robots, and Ethan especially, but, but he, and, and you know, we'll discuss him, and we discovered that Artemis had a at a jagged edge on the scoop. And we are believing that was due to a collision last year between Artemis and El Monitor. And so we did some pi polishing and, and filing, not filing, but polishing with fine emery paper. He had war wounds, is and what you're yes, saying. Yes, war wounds. <laughs> and and they, when we fixed him up, so he was very good. Okay. All right, and we're that, ready now for number 18. Yeah, El, El Monitor. Matador with his flags versus Apollo. Are you ready, Dale? Yes. Three, ready. two, one, go. Matador. Oh, Whoa. that. I that think. was Apollo. I believe so. Let's watch the replay Yuko on that. Apollo. That was quick. Matador. It was. Apollo pushed him off. Yeah, it was close though because they were but both Apollo, heading Apollo off the Apollo had edge. his wheel on the white um, ring as well, so. Right, but I think El Monitor touched off. It was close. Very well. Um, yeah, dynamic here. robots. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. So uh, there was a spinning on both, but Apollo recovered somehow. Sensors did the job. So that's Yuko again to Apollo, right? If I got it right. And that would be the match. If it's very interesting because when Apollo pushes him off, he's at such an angle that 
his wheel is on the white line even as he's pushing his opponent off. Yeah. Oh, and does that matter that he was, he hadn't touched off? He, was he has not on touched the white off. Line. He's on the white line. That he doesn't matter at all. He was on the line, and that's okay. It's the vertical edge that where you touch off, that disqualifies you. Okay. Well, they're really helping us out to see who touched off first. We're agreeing that El Matador touched off first. Okay. He was pushed. All so. right. <laughs> so uh, Apollo is the victor. Now e e event 19. We're getting we close to our student competition, so we're yeah. wrapping this up. Oh, we're going to okay. get the first Thank place and second place of our visiting uh, sumo robots, but and then we'll move right into the okay. student competition. The so students we are, are in waiting the anxiously. Ah. We are in, we are in the finals. Yes, we are. So we, we have two robots that have not yet lost, and remarkably or unremarkably, they are both built by Nathan Burnside, and they are Artemis and Apollo, and then we have to populate the final by having robots that have lost only once. And those are losers. We call this losers round four. And events. Let's not call them losers. Let's no, call them runner-ups. No, they've only lost once. <laughs> yes, they've only lost once. That's what I would prefer also. They've only lost once. And so that's why it's, we like this best of three. And it's event 19. So we need Blumen, Blumen and Newman, please. and Newman. And those are both Dvorskis. Yeah, so we have again here the builder against his own robot. So we're going to need a little help. Someone, Mike and Brent Treeweiler are arranging who's going to run which robot. Okay. Mike, did you t pick the robot you think is going to win, or did you <laughs> give that one to Brent? I picked the one that's a work in progress and kind of complicated to run. That, that's the one you're going to run? That's the one I'm going to run. Okay. <laughs> um, I can't remember. Okay, so uh, assume it's press when the, she says go. All right, I think we're ready to start. Three, two, one, go. Oh, my. Work in progress one, I think. Yes, it did. What's blue the man. name of work in progress? Blue Man. Blue Man, okay. He, he happens to be blue, which helps. <laughs> oh, that is great. Thank you. I won't have that problem again. <clears throat> okay. Three, two, <clears throat> one, go. Oh, he does and everything. And Blumen pushes him off again. He's fast nice and he pushes hard. Nice save by Brett hard. there at the end. <laughs> All right, so second Yuko and match to Blumen. Mike, I just have to ask, you know there's a theater group, Blue Man. Any connection? You never saw him. I was thinking about it, but I chose the name, but he's all the blues. Yes? Okay. <laughs> so we're looking at 20. And I've got to find it. And now I know where to look. There, El Matador and Expert. Oh, this will be interesting. Expert versus El Matador. Each having their own strengths. And 21, we don't know so yet. So here comes El Matador with his flags. Connections are made. We have a remote start. <coughs> Three, two, one, go. Uh, and El Matador pushes him off. Yuko El Matador. I don't remember what expert strategy was that time. We didn't, did, the replay might have shown it, but 
I think Are he we went ready? pretty straight ahead. Let's see which direction he goes this time. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Ah, uh, I think it was not so much expert chased El Matador, but it was El Matador making himself an easy target that time. Yeah, El Matador kind of circled off so, and fell Yuko off. So, Yuko expert. That's happened once before. There, yes. He kind of circled and fell he off himself. He turned to the side yeah. a little too far. Oh, we've got to clean the circle. Maybe he was pl being placed a tad too close to the edge. That might be a possibility to keep well, in mind. Well, it was after he started, so. So is that one and one? That's one and one. All right, three, two, one, go. I, he likes to be started at the near the edge, though. Whoa! Ha ha! He lost a part, but he. But he won the. He won the. Won the match. He there. won the match. He's Yuko to El Matador match El Matador and then we're on to 21 which would be Blumen and El Matador Blumen and El Matador okay so Blumen oh El Matador had a slight repair he had to get his flag put back on yes and that's not a major issue as long as that flag doesn't accidentally get pushed off. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Are you ready, Dale? Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh my goodness, El Matador just pushed Blumen right off. And, and, and <laughs> they are both powerful robots, so they that are makes, both it even, very powerful. makes it even more impressive. Surprising there is, if there isn't damage done. <laughs> now, there is a little damage. I would put in a shock absorber, Mike. And <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, you've got Blumen, who is a work in progress, you said? Yes. And what's new about Blumen? Well, it's my first two-wheel uh, robot, so the others have either treads or four wheels. Um, at least, uh, and uh, so that's that's something that I that's, I haven't tried before. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <coughs> so we've got one and one. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Blumen pushed El Matador off. That Somehow time. El Matador didn't get a square hit no, and, and he got wasn't quite off. up to speed for some reason. So that. We'll watch the instant replay. Did I make an, an error on the previous one? Who won the f previous Yuko? That was actually El Salvador, right? I mean, El Matador, right? Am I, am I right? It's one and one. Okay. Now I've got it right. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Whoa, ah. no time. That time El Matador yeah, did it. Just a, a very fast square hit by El Matador. And I don't know how you oppose that other than being able to hit just as hard. So, El Matador, the Yuko, and the match. And then we're going, I think, to... to okay, we have... Up, we have now to... Oops, just a second. Um, yeah, it'll be right there. So, 22 is going to generate a, an opponent for El Matador, who has fought back from the only lost once round, and that would be Artemis and Apollo. One of them will win, the other one will lose and go to the only lost once bracket and then fight El Matador. So we have program. Artemis and Apollo, both built by Nathan Burnside yep. from Los Alamos, New Mexico. Yes. So I'm not sure which one he's um, rooting for, but we'll yeah. find out soon. <laughs> that Three. was the short of it. 
Are you ready? I am ready. I'm sorry. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Oh, yes, we got him under the chair. All right, I'm going to have to see the instant replay because they both look pretty much the same here. Tell me who was left standing. Riley, who's your robot? I can't read it from here. Artemis, Artemis. okay. Artemis was Artemis. the winner last year. You call Artemis. No. We had one go over the top of the other, and that's why the one that... Okay, so... Apollo went under and then off and left, who's still on the mat? Artemis. So I guess Artemis stayed on the mat and yeah, Apollo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, did Apollo actually go right underneath Artemis? It was an over and under thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, watch the. Uh, All right. <laughs> oh, we've got a repair to make. So can we do the rerun again, the instant replay? So Apollo gets a repair. He's got a slight repair to go on Apollo. Uh, Here's that instant replay. And the reason we had to chase Apollo around is because we have his stop sensor covered, I assume. OK, rewinding it. And here we go again. You see, one went right up over the top of the other. Not quite over, but he got his lifted, scoop lifted, and then he couldn't push anymore, so. See where it goes next. And then the one who was pushing <laughs> didn't know oh to stop my God. and went right yep. off the ring. He, he knew where the edge was well enough. Very interesting. All right, we're back again. So let's uh, recap. The win was to Artemis last time, and this is uh, the second. Best two out of three. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, that's that uh, we need to do over. I think we have to do over. Artemis didn't actually get going there. You want, I don't know. It would be. Uh, okay. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. And that was a win for Artemis again. So Yuko and match to Artemis. So we have and Apollo a, was the loser who and, needs to go up against El Matador, I believe. Yes, that is, I agree. Apollo versus El Matador. Right? Okay. And so Nathan Burnside versus Alan Sines, both from Los Alamos for second place. Well, this will be for the privilege of fighting Artemis. Right, and it will determine second place, I agree. The loser will get second, the winner will go on to fight Artemis. I wonder if these two have been fighting at Los Alamos. Oh yeah, and they sit, they, in previous years, they've sat together during the morning of this event, and. They say they have a blast watching this. <laughs> <laughs> the, this year, maybe somebody has to be at work. And I know Rick Brooks usually has to be at work, so he doesn't get to watch the match live. But again, this, for the record, will be available within 24 hours, according to the manager of the video production department. So we'll look forward to that. And they do a very fine job. We, we're very pleased with what they do. <clears throat> El Matador, I don't know if it was a flag or a wheel, but we're back again. Bow, El Matador versus Apollo. Three, two, one, go. Flags are waving. Oh, it's, ah, oh. El no. Matador was the winner. Okay, Yuko He's El got a Matador. little bit more push. <clears throat> Next to the 
Right. The next event will be the final for this group, group like one, so visiting robots. And then we'll move on to group two, student class of constructed robots. So El Matador versus Apollo. Three, two, one, go. This is the second of three. And El Matador does it again, best two out of three. All right, Yuko and match to El Matador. Apollo takes of three. third. The loser is third, and one of the other two robots, El Matador and Let's see. I have to find. I'm confused. I'm. I'm not finding. That was 23, and we still have to. I believe wasn't 22 the final for the winner? No, these robots. They have to lose twice. <coughs> Artemis has not lost yet, and maybe this one wasn't. Let's just check to make sure, I, I think it went forward, but let's just check. Artemis, right there. Maybe I didn't update. All right, but we, maybe that's it. Maybe you're right, Pat. Because yeah. now, because Apollo lost once and Artemis had never lost, Artemis is the winner, never lost. Okay. Right. And yeah, so we were, I, I was confused, and I confess. So that is, and this was settling. You were right, Pat. They were fighting for second. And third, I don't know if there's ambiguity about third, but definitely Artemis took first place, El Matador took second place, and I guess it would be fair to say Apollo took third place. And we do have a standing. So right now, if we had a plaque award, and if we had Nathan Burnside here, we would award to Nathan Burnside, at this moment, the plaque for top visiting robot. And we can go to the standings if we want, but I think maybe we don't need to look at that. We need to go on to group two. Yeah, let's see who, which and of our students would be we need to call CH down. CH and Mater for round, for event one, round one, event one, student class robots. And I'm noting we have gone 90 minutes with introductions and completely through the visiting robots competition. Okay. So our first group will be... C-H comes from Kai He, and Kai is spelled C-A-I, so we've got the initials C and H, Kai He. And then uh, the other one is Kato Mater. Um, uh, Mater is from Caitlin Schmidt. Good to see another girl here. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> Have you bowed yet? Okay, he's plugging in. Bow, please. And here's our first competition for this UNI student class. Three, two, one, go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, Mater is our winner. Mater was left standing. And Mater, Mater I, was left I, circling. I met, I met Caitlin on the stairs yesterday. She said, well, at least it doesn't go in circles anymore. But now <laughs> it has resumed its circling It's doing behavior. the ballerina twirl there. But so, so. Zumo, I mean, Okay, Yuko, we need a second. Yuko That's two out of three. To Mater. That's okay. So and Mater. And then we had a line sensor issue with, with uh, CH, who is being operated by Chuhan. Three, two, one. Go. Mater is still circling. And but CH I think, is not I moving at I, all. I think CH so I, did, I don't know. The start did the light did the light go off 
Shall hand. we do Just a redo? Check. Yeah, we're definitely going to do a redo. Okay, let's do a redo there. I suspect the push the start button somehow. You want to just try it with your hand. Hold the bumper in your hand and make sure it'll start. Chew hand. Just give it a try. Do a little experiment. Can you make it go? Yeah. He's yeah. got it now. All right. I think we're set to go. We have one win for Mater. Three, two, one, go. All right. Oh, and again, Mater wins by spinning. All right. All right. Can't, be, can't beat that. If nope. CH. You, um, you go to Mater, match to Mater. <clears throat> Mater is a cartoon character that people showed me on the internet. I'm not familiar with Mater, but. All right. And our second match is Potato versus Dumbo. Dumbo having ears, we're going to see. That's Chu Han's robot. Chu Han just helped out a classmate. We have students that go off to work, and we have an, or, our classes. We can, I'm sorry, to work. I'm thinking of, anyway. Uh, and so Chu Han helped out, and now he's running his own robot, Dumbo. And Dumbo, if you look, we're supposed to be able to see some ears. And Potato is supposed to be a musical robot, or at least a robot that makes some noise. We'll find out. OK. So bow and place your robots, please. Mitch Anderson with Potato is a physics major, as is Chuhan. Three, two, one, go. All right, potato pushes. Potato. And Chu Han's Dumbo ears are mirrors. He's trying to be invisible, a stealth One. robot Go. from the side. So he has mirrors that hang down on the sides over the wheels. And I have to score this one, so excuse uh, me and I'll get to could work. Could you bring your um, robot back here and hold it so they can zoom in on those ears? They're finishing the instant replay now. And there they go. If you can zoom in on that. There you go. Nice looking mirror ears. Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready, Dale? Yeah, yes, okay. I am. Place your robots. Three, two, one, go. I have to comment, if, if, if Chuhan really believes in his ears, he should put his robot sideways. Ooh, we almost had a exit there. He, he needs to have better eyes. All of our student robots, not all, many of Here the student go. robots there need better eyes. And Potato pushes all Dumbo right. off the mat. All right, so second Yuko and match to Potato. Mitch, he do you have any comment his robot on how sideways. he so well, relatively speaking? Ooh, we no, almost I had an exit again. there. <laughs> no, I don't think it's he needs Total to have What about eyes. your weight distribution? All of our student robots, not all. Well, Many of the student go. robots there need scoop. Okay. Sorry. Right. That helps. Okay. We're looking for Nikola, as in Nikola Tesla, at Riley Bookheit, who's been helping out, and Hero, built by computer science major Jacob Campbell. And Nicola is uh, from Riley, Bro is that book height? Yes. And you're an all science teaching major. I am looking forward to seeing your students here in about five or six years. I think this is something you should start at your school. Yep, bow please. Great, okay. This is Nicola versus Hero. Three, two, one, go. Uh oh, oh. I think we have to redo. There's okay, we'll redo happening. because it looks like Hero is uh, having a little start problem there. So one, yeah, give it a give it a trial. Oh, never mind. We just had a connection to make. All right, we're all having we troubles here. We have polarizing here. plug connectors over the last two years. Stop. Three. Two, one, go. Whoa. Okay, 
So our winner is Nicola. Uh, that's, that's this bout, and we do another one. But it, you call it a Nicola. Yes, and here we go again. Three, two, one, go. Well, that was interesting. Second win to Nicola. So that would suggest. Hero was doing good till he fell off. Yeah, that uh, the, the Yuko and the match to Nicola, Hero <laughs> need, had a little trouble seeing the edge. I think that was what happened there. Bella and Leo. Okay, that's okay, going to be Bella. event four. And after that, we go to round two DT and Mater. So Jing Yi with Bella <coughs> and Katie Sandman with he with Leo. Jing Yi Wen built Bella and oh, Katie Sandman. Took me a long time to get two girls up here, but this is fantastic. <laughs> All right. Are you ready, Dale? Oh, yes, absolutely. Three, two, one, go. <coughs> oh, oh no, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's um, interject that uh, Katie is a science ed, that all went science to teaching. That Leo. Right? Okay, let's not uh, mix it up, but Kate, we have an all, another all science teaching major here. Yes, and we're Pat, so, very and, happy to know and that. And we'll say a word about Jing Yi, too. You are a physics major. Excellent. Go I was a physics major a millennium ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, play some. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. Now, Leo, oh, wait a minute. Um, shall we start again? No, let's, let's do a redo, because she moved it after, after we said go. You have to step away after we say go. So put it where you want it to be, and then we'll step away. Oh. Oh. One second, we've got a problem. All right. And while they're looking at that, um, tell me a little bit about Leo's flag. Um, I decided to make his flag so that way when he sees an opponent a certain way, it, the flag goes in that direction to try to distract it. Okay. And it also lets you know that he actually saw the opponent. Mm -hmm. Great. And you're, you're an all science teaching major? Yes, I am. When do you graduate? I graduate next year. Fantastic. Um, do you know yet where you will be student teaching? I don't know the exact schools. I'm going to be in the Sioux City Council Bluffs, Omaha region, though, so I'm hoping I'm going to be in Sioux City. And I'm hoping that you can do a sumo robotics there. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay. Um, looks like we're still doing a little bit more there. Do you enjoy building things? Um, this is my first time actually making something like this, and I thought it was pretty fun, so... I think the creative urge to build something, <laughs> whether it's knitting, weaving, or robotics. Yes, it's a great thing to do. What are you going to do to get more girls to be interested in science? Oh, I don't really know. I guess I just have to try to encourage them. That's the best I can do, try to make it fun. Just by being there, I think, will help a lot. Yep, okay. I hear something over there, so I think we're working. All right, it looks like we're going to get started. Mission accomplished. Okay, fabulous. Let's put them down again. <coughs> Three, two, one, go. And we're going to watch for that flag to see when Leo finds Bella. Not yet. They're, they're staying on the arena. They are on the arena. They Oh! There's the oh, flag. Oh, no. You know, the flag is a very innovative feature of Katie's, oh. Katie's 
robot. It goes down onto the left or the right, depending on where she last saw the, which sensor last saw the opponent. So that's okay. very innovative, trying to get the opponent to be on the same side as the flag. <laughs> well, this is so like interesting. It's also yeah. a blindfold. <laughs> the flag needs to hang lower. The flag needs to hang lower, but it's a great idea. It's, you know, it's, it's, El Matador has a good idea, but this one takes it up a notch. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's the problem with a two-wheeler. It uh, kind of lost its balance and well, went the, off. Well, the flag <laughs> contributed to that problem there. So that the flag went needs to, to hang Bella. lower. Right, so it's and one so we're one and one. Lower. Yes. But right. it's a this great idea. Best two out of three. Here we go. It's, you know. <clears throat> three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Oh, that was a little bit of blind robot behavior, right? Face to oh, face we've and seen turned it. away. It's too bad. The eyes are not quite as good as we'd like. Yeah. You notice there. Okay. And there we have it. Katie, do you think your proximity sensor kicked in right there? I hope so, I hope so too. So, so it Yuka was Leo over to Bella. Yuka to Leo, match to yeah. Leo, match to Leo. Yes. And then, you notice I there, have to, I have to submit. Excellent I want to say that both. when, incidentally, Good. you may be surprised, Noah's going to graduate school, right? When? Tell, tell me, I don't want to say it. What are, what are your professional goals? Professional goals? Yeah. <clears throat> um, can I say finance? <laughs> finance. Yes. Finance. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Finance will be fabulous. You'll have a science background. You'll be ready for finance. Yeah. Fabulous. Good. And Kai might be similar, economics. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, so we're on to round event five, and that is a robot that got a buy, DT. V Fu Vigeronicorn won the student comp practice competition. And Caitlin Schmidt, another all science teaching major, has already been up once with Mater, who had the little spin move that kept <laughs> Mater on the arena. Okay, <clears throat> Mater versus DT. <clears throat> We're connecting the wires right now. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh, Mater is no longer circling, and DT Whoa. is off the side. So Mater is our winner again. Uh, you call to Mater. I'm a, I am surprised. Uh oh, lost a little. Your name. <laughs> I don't okay. think DT is in the habit of driving off, but maybe something has gone amiss with DT. Okay, let's place him for the second round. And three. Two, one, go. Yeah, he's Ooh. got line sensor problems. And yep, that Mater, Mater is, is our winner up. again. And you notice, Mater is not spinning in circles. No, Mater is. Caitlin, any idea or out. comment you want to explain? Pure luck. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh boy, there we, we go. We have an intermittent ballerina problem. At least she's <laughs> honest. Okay, we got an honest person there. Yep. Okay. And so, what's our next one? Well, I'm having a hard, hard time keeping my computer under control, so let's, let's see what we can see. We're on number six, it looks like. K. Arty for King Arty. Brent. Treeweiler has been helping quite a bit. Now he had a buy, and finally, K. Arty, King Arty. Versus Potato. Versus Potato. Excellent. Place your robots. Three. Oh, just a second. We got the wires to put together.
nice quick connects make it very easy to do. And he's tucking them in underneath. Keep them out of harm's way. Got a loops of wire on the top, a little bit of a hairdo thing going on here. Three, two, one, go. KRD versus potato. It's a pushing match. And KRD wins. And I believe KRD's strategy, Brent's strategy, was potato. to make a robot that was low and could push well. That was and he spent a lot of time working on that. Okay, let's place them again. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. And Potato is really pushing back this time. And there's a little more traction on the white line, so that might make it harder, but, or. And yeah, I didn't get the microphone down close enough, but we've got a little bit of a whine from the potato there, too. All right, so we have two <laughs> Yukos. KRD is our winner. For and KRD. And potato the potato is really pushing the, back yeah, this time. The match goes to KRD. And there's a little more traction on the white line, so that. We could ask Brent when the opportunity. Okay, can we have there. Corgi and Nicola back up, please? Yeah, and too bad Foo can't be here. He apparently has class. Corgi is our first digital servo robot. And we don't know, understand completely all the technology, but the control circuitry is a little different, and it seems to be a little faster. Okay, Corgi versus Nicola. Three, two, one, go. Corgi has the yellow wheels and pushes Nicola off the side. So you see, that's a rather zippy robot, and it, it, has, really it has less than $20 motors. We have a piece that we are not sure whose it belongs to. Corgi has the yellow Well, if it's not necessary. You call <laughs> Corgi. All right. <clears throat> and we were going to set Corgi up at an angle this time. Three, two, one, go. And Nicola responds at an angle as well. Right. Oh, oh, bad move on Corgi's part there. There you see the challenge with a digital and Nicola servo. Responds They're a little at an bit angle harder well. to control. So yeah, I think we had a wire loose too. You go to Nicola. Yeah, I think okay, maybe one and one now. I, I think. don't think you want Corgi going off to the side. I think you want Corgi going right at the opponent. Okay, three, two. <coughs> One, go. And yes, they are a little bit more head on now. And Corgi pushes Nicola yeah, and off. And notice Corgi knew where the opponent was and turned directly to the opponent. Yep, his sensors were working so well. So you call Corgi and match Corgi. And I think the idea is that that digital robot, the servo robot is a, like a feisty little corg, corg, corgi dog, so, okay. Okay, we need Unicorn so and Leo, we please. To, we need to see where 17 is, and I'm looking. So we have Mitch Steffensmeyer, who is a biology manager, and who's our other one here? Leo, oh, yes. We have seen Katie Sandman before. Okay, we're going to event nine. Event nine, right there. Uh, eight. Oh, oh, eight. Sorry, eight. Eight, eight is Unicorn and Leo. Unicorn and Leo. Just a moment while we get our computer connected there. That's the one. Okay, Unicorn versus Leo. Three, two, one, go. And the Unicorn has a horn. 
or Lance, that's what we would call it. And it has pushed Leo right off the mat. You call and the uni unicorn. Yes, <coughs> it's very and interesting. And the, right. unicorn and the unicorn operator is slightly yeah. hampered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Biology major Mitch Steffensmeyer, he broke his arm about two months ago, and then Ooh. he managed to reinforce that by breaking it again last week. Oh, dear. Three, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Remember, Leo's flag will go down when it sees it. Ah, Unicorn just pushes it right off. So okay. that's a so second one for Unicorn. And match to Unicorn. Remember, Leo's flag will go down when it sees it. Okay, and now we'll roll up to number nine. And then nine. DT versus Bella. And had Fu been here, he might have been able to modify DT, but we'll see what happens. And okay. Bella. Each robot has lost once, so this, these competitions in the only lost round once always eliminate a robot and move another one forward in that. Well, I wish Fu could have been here as a computer science major. He's uh, actually built two robots, but he was not able to be here. He was a good, good student. He's in class. Yeah, and he's, his DT won this, the practice competition, this robot that drove off the edge. Oh, okay, great. He won. That robot won, so I think he might have been able to fix the problem. I don't know if, if Ethan can identify it. DT versus Bella. Yeah, and then after that is... Place your robots. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Oh, no. how about that? Um, <laughs> DT just went right off the. Mat. Again, again. Mm hmm. No line sensors. All right, here we go again. Three, two, one, go. Oh, when he can find it, he's a good pusher. So yeah, Ethan, DT is the winner on the second one. Put DT forward, right on the, on the brown line. So one and one. <clears throat> this is the best two out of three. Three, two, one, go. Uh -oh. oh, that's oh. Okay, but, we got a question here. Yeah, I think <clears> that <throat> I think that goes to DT because um, Bella became immobile. Moment. Oh, it's not a redo then. What? Is it a redo? Uh -oh. oh, we can do it over, but that. Oh, oh you think so? What do you think? You think five seconds? That could be. Should that we could just be. do a redo? Uh, I think we should go by the rules. I think I think oh. he drove off the edge oh. and quickly. So I, you know, and it's pretty. I think she was the more competent robot in the sense that she was not driving off the arena. <laughs> so I think we just give we just give this to Bella and move on. Okay. <clears throat> Even though you know you don't know what it could have done the next time, but you get, I think we'll do it that way. We may see those again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, so that one went to Bella, who uh, did fall over but didn't run off the edge of the mat, so <laughs> kind of interesting. That, that one is, you, Pat, uh, that one is uh -huh. a, almost a coin toss, whether it yes, should be. Yes, it a, sure is. <laughs> because they both displayed certain competencies. Yes, they sure all did. Right, so, all right, so now we're looking for. Let's see, are we okay. up to number 10 then? Number 10, Potato versus Hero. Let's get Mitch Anderson and Jacob Campbell, Jacob Campbell up here. Actually, you're not Jacob Campbell. <laughs> That's okay. We've got, we've got somebody to run Hero. <coughs> now, Hero versus Potato. 
And the placement is interesting. We've got potato at an egg, at an angle, and hero close to the center. And three, two, one, go. Potato's plan is to move out of the way. Oh, now they'll have to find each other. Oh, too late, hero went off the side. So that one's to Potato. You call Potato. All right. <coughs> Potato's plan is to move out and of the way. Again. Slightly different placement. Three, two, one, go. I think Hero is planning to try to hit Potato after he's moved a little. E oh, well. I think that Potato hit second, but you can do the look at the instant. Oh, let's take a look, look at that instant replay. E oh, yep. well. I, uh, I think that Hero hit, hit the edge, e and then Potato tumbled oh. off. Oh. Right there. Oh, oh that looks. Gosh, it's so oh, close. Potato oh, touches oh, there, oh, and I mean, hero touches there, and then potato. Oh, I think it's pretty clear. E oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I think so. I think that's a Yuko to oh, potato. Pretty equally matched there. Yeah, it was close. All right. Yuko and match to potato. Okay. <laughs> and number 11. 14. Will be. E no? We're at number no. 11. Is this one not? All right, sorry. We're at 11. My bad. Nicola and Dumbo, please. I think we want to see. Dumbo, remember, has the mirrored ears. Nicola, um, what exactly is this uh, piece here? Uh, it's named after inventor Nikola Tesla. So it's supposed to be a Tesla coil. So we have a Tesla coil there. Thank yes, you Yes, but it's much. not connected to a battery. If it were, we would disqualify him. Okay, it's, it's there for? He has a Tesla coil <laughs> on his robot. Okay, but all right, let's see. Only uh, a model Tesla coil. Bell, oh, he's on his knee. Yeah. The idea okay. is you're not permitted to damage your opponent on purpose. Oh, okay. Three, two, one, go. I think, I think um, he's touching the vertical edge. He is touching the vertical edge, um, but he is fighting back. Yuko Nikola. Yes, Nikola was our winner there. Okay, let's have a second round here. Are you ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. So Nikola has one win. And, oh, same okay. thing. Uh, you, you second window win for Nicola. Okay. One that win. raises the question, how would we deal with a robot that could elevate itself and off of the arena? And that's a hypothetical question at the moment. <clears throat> we must be on Leo versus CH. But... Chuhan, thank you. Your robot has competed. We should thank Jacob Campbell and uh, Fu for his first robot. So, Leo and CH. We want number. There we are. Yeah, right there. <coughs> Bella and okay, Patel. we'll wait for Dale to click on edit. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, I lost it. There you go. Number 12. It won't let go. This guy. And okay. uh, I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh. oh. Line sensors. Line sensor problems with CH. Okay. You call. If Leo. he can get him in his sights and hit him off before he hits for the line, we're okay. <laughs> Leo is Katie Sandman's robot. Yes, Katie's got it. Remember, we were watching that flag to see if it can find it. Okay, three, two, one, go. Okay. And CH is Kai Hayes' robot. 
Oh, oh that line sensor. I think he knows the lines there. He just can't respond fast enough. Okay. All right. So Leo and another Leo Leo gets Kai Hayes. Leo twice. gets the match yes. and moves forward. And Kai, thank you. You're not here. Apparently, Kai's not here right now, but still, we'll give her our thanks, and she can see this in the video. And number, will. And will. Number thirteen. Down just a little. Okay. Potato versus Bella, please. Potato versus Bella. Jingji Wen and Mitch Anderson, physics majors, both. Okay, if you will click your number 13 edit button there, Dale. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, you can go ahead even if okay. I have not done that. All right, that. three, two, one, go. Potato pushes Bella off. Yuko Potato. And I was going to catch that sound. Bella, or excuse me, Potato is a crier, <laughs> a screamer, <laughs> whatever. All right, let's go again. Three, two, one, go. Ah. All right, Yuko Potato. Jingji, I think Can maybe I get the, your proximity uh, sound on yours sensor there? Can wasn't. Can make it go again? And let me ju turn just a little bit so that we can see you there. Okay. That should have my idea. Come on. Okay. All right. So, Yuko and Match to Potato. You went to a lot of trouble to make him make sound. Yeah, and Jing Yi, thank you very much. That ends the competition for Bella. All right, we'll expect that song to get better next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready for the next match then? That would be event 14, it's in Leo and Nicola, does that seem right? Yes, Leo and Nicola. <coughs> All right, three, <coughs> two, one, go. <coughs> Remember, Leo has the flag. Oh, it's a grudge match, they're just pushing away. Pushing match. But it looks like Leo Oh, very interesting. Leo managed to survive and push Nicola until he fell off. Okay. So you call Leo. Leo's a winner first. Okay. Let's set him back down again. That was very close. I'd Three. like to see that flag take action. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> oh. oh. No. So a little instability, a little we instability. We had this issue once before where one fell down and the other one went off yeah. the edge. Well, I think the flag is causing a little he bottom heaviness, but it's one and one. Okay. Somehow got to get all the other weight in front or get the flag oh. in front. Oh, three, oh, now so two, a little one, go. But engineering all that is hard. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So Leo, Nicola, uh, Nicola got pushed behind Leo. Leo off, so. uh, Yuko. Yep. And Yuko to Nicola. But Nicola engineering all that is hard. The match. Yep. So Katie, uh, thank okay. you. Oh, Very okay. interesting robot. Okay. Nicola, good uh, run. Just a second. Yeah, I just had to get it to let go. Mater and K. Artie. Brent Treeweiler, Caitlin Schmidt. Caitlin is progressing well just by circling effectively. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, the winners, Mater versus Kay Artie. Mm -hmm. And then Corgi and the Unicorn. Three, two, one, go. Opponent oh. sensors not oh, firing, oh, oh. but proximity sensors are firing. <sighs> That's often the case. We not, don't know. We do not always know oh, why. Oh, <laughs> okay. Kardi is our winner. Yuko 
Kearty. Kearty took second or third in the practice competition. That's <coughs> often the case. And we have a we small repair over there. Okay. Oh. And Kearty emphasizes being low center of gravity and weight in the front pushing hard. Okay. And it looks like Mater is going to get a slight tweak as well. So, Dale, it must be a really fun class to watch these <laughs> students as they're building these robots. Yes, and each year it's a little different. This year we put a little more emphasis on basics, calibrating sensors, so they understood exactly what their sensors were doing and to some extent how, the physics, more of it. But then it comes time to compete, and they haven't moved as far ahead because they're no, they know more, but they haven't done as much. You know how that can go. So I'm thinking, though, for the uh, teaching majors, oh, yeah. understanding those basics is really important before they oh, go out and start teaching. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a rewarding way to do it, at least as an instructor. You have a sense that they have a better handle and, on what they're doing. And boy, the, in the last two weeks, they really moved it. Yeah. I, I was thinking some students are just not moving along very fast, but boy, they had good ideas. I couldn't see the creativity until the last two weeks, and boy, they really got creative. You saw Katie with her yes, flag, with flag. Mm -hmm. adding. That all got done in the last eight, nine days. Okay, <coughs> here we go with <coughs> Kearty versus Mater. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh, just oh. plain pushing match. Oh, made her put up a good fight, but K. Artie pushed her, All right, pushed so it right off the side. You call you call and match to K. Artie. Yes. <coughs> uh, just. Oh. <coughs> and now we need Corgi and Unicorn. Two good robots. Um, one second. Oh, just a second. So, Corgi being the digital robot that needs to be close to the opponent because it's not always able to stay on, on no. the arena. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Unicorn okay. has a lance. Biology major Mitch Steffensmeyer. Three, two, one, go. are well matched. Now we've got a little bit of a dosey -si do I'm going to yeah. start it, start my timer. Timer's running. I'm going to say we're going to go maximum 15 seconds, unless there's a change. A little bit of vector physics going Ten, on here. They are very equally matched. 14, 15, six, any change? Not yet. I don't, well, what do you think? Was it closer to the edge? Well, they are getting oh, closer. Oh, yeah, they are getting closer to the edge. They are. So I'm going to do. Oh, and then they repositioned. <laughs> I think the one had an edge sensor, detected it, and then came right back. Two. Okay, we are. Okay, we're. That was eight. They're working their way towards the center now. All right. I think that this should be a do-over. I think so, too. Very equally matched. Okay. They are both very good pushing robots. <clears throat> and clean off, yeah, clean it off. And they should wipe their wheels after this, so they, before they start the second okay. bout. Three, two, one, go. Ah, again. Uh oh. Wow. All right. So the <laughs> yeah, Corgi <but> <laughs> has pushed the unicorn over. But you see Corgi. If Corgi's going to sit on the edge, Corgi's going to be in trouble. But there the Yuko goes to Corgi uh -huh. again. And Unicorn did a valiant fight. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, unicorn oh, heads. Oh, they both are. Yeah, okay, they're, they're both up. That's a do-over. I don't another think they're going to fall down. These two are so closely matched. They're like identical twins, but one has a horn. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Three, two, one, go. Okay, All Unicorn right. managed it's to push him off. One, you or one and one is unicorn. right. <clears throat> As we said, equally matched. I All think right. I think the um, Lance is helping to keep Unicorn from getting hooked by the opponent. The opponent's scoop slides up the Lance. Three, two, one, go. Corgi missed him that yep. time and went right off. So the you okay. see, digital servos are pretty snappy, but they're pretty hard to control. So okay. Yuko, Unicorn is our winner. You you call and match to Unicorn. And now number seventeen is Mater and Nicola. Yeah, yeah, I'm just. And three, two, one, go. Oh, another very closely matched pair. But they're, they're, they're moving. But it looks like Mater has a little bit more power. And oh, oh. there we go, back again. Let's see and if they're, Nicola. They're staying on the arena. But Nicola was a little blind there. He had a uh -oh. chance. Oh, Nicola caught, made her on the side and pushed it right off. Okay, so you call. Nicola was a little Nicola. blind there. He had uh -oh. a chance. Oh, near range oh, sensor Nicola was working. We're not going to get use out of our distance sensors. Okay, let's place them for the second. Three, two, one, go. And Nicola pushes Mater off for a second win. All right. Second Yuko match to Nicola. Congratulations, Riley. Caitlin, thank you very much. Very much. Interesting robot. And now number 18, we need Corgi and yeah. Potato. Eight, 18 So the winner of this match will battle Nicola. It Corgi looks like uh, we're having some students going and coming. We're between classes, I think. So we're waiting to get operators for Corgi and Potato, and we have them, and they will be on the arena in a moment. We've tried digital servos a few years back, and the students felt they really weren't able to control them. And we thought this time Fu had more success, and he, he's had pretty good success. But apparently stopping on the line is hard work for a digital okay. servo. This okay. gives us a chance to point out bowing. This is a Japanese sport with traditions associated with regular sumo wrestling. And for placement, we have potato to the side and Corgi at an angle to catch it. Three, two, one, go. So he's got Corgi to go forward and hopefully a little bit of vector physics there. Uh-oh. Yeah. Corgi is off the mat. He, his so sensor got could not Corgi to go lock forward in on and potato hopefully a little bit of vector physics. So a little too fast. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, 
Oh, they missed each other. Now, there he was blind. He did not and he's off. see his okay. opponent intact. So potato okay. for the second yep. win and the match. Second Yuko and match to potato. All right. So Fu, you're not here, but thank you very much. Fu v. Geronicorn. And Potato moves forward to so fight Nicola six. for the privilege oh. of going back to the finals. Nicola versus Potato again. Potato's got hot wheels here. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Potato pushes Nicola off. Nicola has a little bit of a center of gravity problem. Okay, so Yuko, Potato. Get that Van de Graaff thing to go down and give him a little counterweight. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go. Okay, they lost Now, each did other. we hear sounds from Potato? <gasps> okay. So Nicola found Potato Nicola from behind. Nicola pushed Potato out that time, so I think we're one and one. Mitch, is, is Potato okay, talking? Now, did other. we hear sounds from Potato? Okay, not, I'm, yep. I'm a hearing aids person, so I'm not going to hear it all, I guess. All right, let's go for the third. Best two out of three, and three, two, one, go. Notice, Mitch, oh. really? Same problem as before. That was not an instant replay, folks. That was the third. <laughs> and there was no doubt that Potato's sensors were seeing Nicola and correcting as he drove forward. Yes, that was good. Yes, we have Potato on the okay. there. Okay, so match to Potato. I like the way both of those robots behave. <clears throat> okay, so we're, we've populated uh, a, not a future event, but we're going to, t we are going oh. to round event 20, KRD against Uni Unicorn in the finals. These so are this is the final for yes. first place, and is that then, right? And then we'll have a battle for second and, and third. All right then, <laughs> KRD and Unicorn. This is the battle for first. And Unicorn, I think, took either second or third third in the practice competition. Well, Unicorn's <laughs> been busy, so uh, here we go. All right. Nice bows. Three, two, one, go. Uh-oh, here we go. And they're very closely matched. So I started the timer. <clears throat> we'll go 20 seconds just to make sure nothing changes in a reasonable time. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, do over. So evenly matched, just amazing. It's a little bit like square dancing here. Mm hmm. Do si do. Three, two, one. Oh, one second. Everybody's got problems. All right, are we ready? Three, two, one, go. I like that wild haircut on Kayardi. He's got some nice loopy braids there. Oh, Whoa. but he's off. Unicorn pushes him off. So. Yuko, Unicorn. That's our first one. Okay, let's go for the second. That <coughs> wild haircut on Kayardi. He's got some nice loopy braids there. And oh, we're going to try a different Buddy. position. Three, two, one, go. We've got Kayardi at an angle. Okay. I'll start the timer. Yes, we're back at the do -si do again. This looks pretty even. 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19, do over. All right. Very, very well matched for first place. Unicorn versus King Artie. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh, a nudge. Kay Artie got Unicorn off. A nudge from Kay Artie. Unicorn got involved with the white line. Yep. And didn't have a code trick. So, so that's Yuko, one and one. Yuko, Kay Artie. Very, very close for first place. Uh, <clears throat> this three, is for the student plaque award. Three, Whoever wins this. Two, one, go. Right now, right here, student plaque award. Something to treasure for the rest of your life. And oh, all and it right. goes to Kay Artie. Brent A Treweiler. round of applause for Kay Artie. Student plaque award. And now let's go Something down and the see the battle for, the for second place. Life. This is the first year that we had a clear cut <laughs> winner. And that really is, that is worthwhile, I think. And Pat, like, uh oh, just a second, does not. I have made an error. Let's fix it. Uh, and the software saved me. Two. Here we go. There we go. Now, KRD. And there as you, you said, go. we should have our, okay, we have one more, and that is unicorn and potato for second, for third place. This would be for third place. First and second, I would assume, are K. Artie and unicorn, and oh, unicorn still has to fight once more. Okay. So let's get unicorn and potato up here for the last round. We're almost finished, folks. <clears throat> there will be a b brief final stage involving four robots. All right. Did you want to bow last time? And <clears throat> three, two, one, go. These are closely matched, too. All right. Well, it's changing a little bit, I think. They're going straight toward the edge. All right, now. Yep. All right, Potato pushed Unicorn off. So With, Within Yuko, the 20 seconds, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Yuko, Potato. I did not see it, frankly, because I was. Oh, well, we'll see it on the uh, just. I'm pretty sure you're replay. right. Would you gentlemen agree that Potato pushed Unicorn off? Okay, we're agreeing on that. Oh, gonna, these are closely matched, too. If we right. watch the whole replay. Uh -huh. well, it's Unless he fast forwards it. <laughs> a bit, I think. They're going straight toward the edge. All right, now. Okay, let's go ahead now. So that was one for potato, I believe. Is that correct? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh. I'm thinking they might be locked. I think the lance made a difference that time. Unicorn has pushed potato off. I think the lance lifted potato off the arena in the front. I saw a bump. Oh. Was that um, the lance I'm moving? I'm thinking they might be locked. Yeah. I think the lance made so a difference that more. time. Unicorn has pushed potato. <laughs> All right. So this is for third place. Second, uh, uh, third place. Okay. No, I'm I'm wrong, Pat. It's for second place. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay, am I gonna? 
We probably oh. oh, here we go. I think Unicorn pushed Potato off, but That's Potato right. came right we back. Probably oh, oh here we go. Unicorn match to oh, Unicorn. Oh. And that brings oh. to a close oh. Oh. two. So Unicorn the, was the, in the second place, is that correct? Yeah, yes. Because um, we can look at the standings, but the previous match was for first place. Whoops, we're in the wrong. Uh, Kearty and Unicorn, do we have to put them together again, or are we done? Just a second. No, we, we, I, we, I'm trying to get down there. Right, and then over here, there it is. So the, the final was, was KRD against Unicorn, and KRD is the overall winner, but Unicorn had only lost once, and to be ejected from the match, you have to lose twice, and we had two robots that had only lost once. They were Unicorn and Potato, and they battled, and now Unicorn came out on top for second place, and presumably, although it, I think it's a bit unclear, Potato would be third place. The standings, the standings might show that. We don't need to look at the standings because we need to get on to the final stage which will involve four robots. Presumably, it will be KRD and Unicorn carrying the student flag against the two robots, Artemis and second place, is it, a, who is second place? Second place is? Ma El Matador, I think. Right, I think it's yes. Artemis El Matador. and El Matador. Artemis and El Matador versus Kearty and Unicorn. Kearty and and the group ones. Okay, I need to do that, or we won't have another bracket. So we yep. will have Artemis and, and then start. We will start the final stage. And they will be contesting against. <coughs> So in round in event one, it'll be Artemis versus El Matador. Whoa, um, that's the way they set it up. I don't know if the seating is what. Oh, we that's should interesting check. because they're both from the visiting round. That's this the way. That's just the way the computer it, did it. There's mm -hmm. there's no seating consideration. Do we want to stick with this or do we want to seat it? and that'll work its way out. Okay, it's gonna be okay. I think that this will sort out the top two robots. Okay. But it, it, it'll be interesting if El, Sa El Matador this time comes out on top. Are the... you ready? <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh, El Matador. A little right navigation. The, went right off the ring there. Problem. Artemis, you go. Whoa. The flag has to be reattached. We should discuss right now a little bit what we think of separating the two groups. It's, you weren't here, Pat, for previous competitions. Um, Mike is somewhere. You could give an opinion on that just while we're all together. Just a second. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of having the two groups separated like this okay. um, and then bringing them together at the very end. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the visiting robots, you know, tend, tend to be a, a totally different kind of design, mm -hmm. and it's appropriate to let them fight against each other, and, and you know, the, the students' robots are, are yet an, uh, another kind of design. I think, I think it was appropriate to separate those. Okay, very good. And at some point, maybe a student robot can rise up to the level of the better visiting robots. Okay, so in the first competition, we had Artemis first and El Matador second. This is the second of this final round. Three, two, one, go. And the action is fast, so you have to watch close. 
Ah, uh, El Matador throws Artemis out of the ring, so we're one and one again. Yeah, Have El Matador gets a square hit. It's hard to beat El Matador. All right, to watch so close. this is three, two, one, go. Both starting back near the edge. Uh, I thought... Okay, Artemis pushed out both El Matador and starting the back El Matador's near the black, edge. So. so that is... So there we have Artemis and the, that... The uh, match to oh, Artemis. And that <laughs> is a reflection of what we had in the first competition as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now we want the two students together, K. Artie and Unicorn. And again, first versus second uh, for a second time. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Do you remember? Oh, oh my we gosh. Just, we need a redo. Somehow the, the starting system simply wasn't implemented. Okay. <coughs> Any idea, Mitch, what happened? Okay. Three, oh, ready? Three, two, one, go. Mitch, no pun intended, but if anybody deserves a break, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and Unicorn okay. pushes K. Artie off the All net. right, and oh. you got one there. All unicorn right. on Mitch, one. no pun intended, but if anybody deserves you a break, you do. Unicorn. <laughs> and uh, Kearty has got some issues there for a moment. No, it's not burn. It's just jiggling in place. It's just not rotating. I think. Oh, it's not. not it's a uh, failed servo. Yeah. Uh, failed server, but they think they can fix it. A failed motor. Okay. And are we going to try to do anything, Ethan? Are we going to? They're going to. We're going to do a quick it. fix. Might be able to. I think in the future we might want to put a visitor versus a student. Um, because we're just redoing our, our previous... Well, uh, it's true, but then mm -hmm. in the round, there will be a student against a visitor. So it'll yeah, it, eventually it will. It. Yeah, Al Almost yeah. immediately. It's not going to be long except for a technical... Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know that we have any control of that. Oh, okay. Maybe in the application. In the beginning, we can arrange it, but at this point, I would have to go see if there's a participants list and... First time we've done it, so uh -huh. we yes. would have had to spend time experimenting right now or <laughs> okay. on a whole separate one, which we could do if we want to take yeah. the time. Um, it's interesting, though, that we are replaying the original. You know, we're getting yes. the same results as before, so it's almost like instead of best two out of three, it's now best, what, four out of score, six? It was one <laughs> Yuko for unicorn, right? Um, the winner last time? Was K R D? It was it this time? No, I got this time. Yeah, this oh, time. Oh, okay. No, that, we're just saying you already had one Yuko, right? I lost. Yeah, one zero. Okay. So it's one zero. It is one to zero, right? And I've got to make sure I've got to submit that score so it yes. doesn't get lost. Yeah. And then I'll try it again. Now it should see there it is, and then I just open it, and it hasn't lost the score. Correct. So it okay. It accidentally gets b lost if I just touch the screen incorrectly. <laughs> All right, so maybe they, I don't know if they switched out a servo, find out what they did. So were you able to switch out the servo? No, it's oh, it was his servo. Oh, yours. I believe just the potentiometer was off place, so it just wouldn't switch. Okay, so it was just a potentiometer problem. Okay. <coughs> KRD versus Unicorn, part two. Three, two, one, go. Uh, KRD was not running, so I think we have to have a redo. Is that correct? We would if it's just a failure to get the push button started. If it's something else. Okay, it was. Okay, it was the wrong button. Here we go again. 
All right. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. Oh. oh. All right. Something not customary for K. Artie happened. K. Artie went off the mat. So I think that is a second yuko for unicorn. Yes, I believe so. And the match to unicorn. Oh, oh. and right. that's Something a different outcome. Not from it customary. certainly is. Time. So yes. it's not just rerunning. <laughs> it's <laughs> no, re it's not. We got it's new re results. All right, and, and so what does the computer want us to do for the next well, one? Well, it wants us to go to the lost once round with El Matador against K. Arty. Okay, El Matador versus K. Arty. And El Matador has sure been in a ring a lot here. He's looking a little tattered, but he's doing well. <coughs> Everybody on? Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh touching and Matador the edge. pulled itself off. That's a problem on the edge, so that's a Yuko to K. Artie. It certainly is. Okay. Oh, oh and touching. Matador. Moment while we put the flag we back on. We need to on. replace the flag on El Matador. Okay. Oh, now. Okay, Artie, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, mm. Kay Artie got has got Matador by the horns. <laughs> <laughs> But Matador is pretty strong and is spinning. Yes. Whoa. And now Matador pushes K. Artie off. That was a very good, uh, that was a. Whoa. And now yes. Matador I pushes. You're going to highlight one. Oh. That would be a pretty good one. And now highlight video. Yep. Right. One and oh. one. Okay. So this is for the privilege of staying in the match and for going on to um, I think fight against Unicorn, which would be a rematch for K. Artie. Now, does it go all the way to first, we'll second, third, we'll fourth? We'll see. I have to go. I have to see the. We'll have to see the results when we. I'm going to submit these, and we can take a look. Ah, oh, it erased it. Yeah, it's right there. Unicorn is going to be against Artemis, so I'm I'm wrong. It's. Whoever loses it between Artemis and Unicorn will face the winner of this event. So I have to put the, in, reinstall the two Yukos. And now I'm again going to attempt to submit the scores. I didn't pick oh, you a didn't. winner. Oh, uh, maybe you can't submit and, I don't know. Okay. Oh, is that it? Because we can't go any further? Are we dead on the arena? Is that the... That's right. It did win twice? Oh. Yeah. Are, is that right? I th okay. Okay. So Are we, we right on We have one more to go, don't now? we? Yes. All right. It's one, it's one and one, and, and this is our one. third match. Best two out of three. Yeah, I, so I believe I you want El Matador to be at El one Matador. until we finish right. this match. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. And okay. Matador uh, lost a wheel, but still managed to push K. Arty off the mat. That's the second time that El Matador lost a wheel, but won a, got wheel problems. won a match. All right. El Matador, Yuko, and match, and so El Matador will fight the loser between Artemis and Unicorn, so El Matador is working back to the, toward the finals. <clears throat> Artemis versus Unicorn.
three, two, one, go. Remember, this is a speedy one. We're going to have to watch close. Oh, Artemis has got a spin. Whoa. <laughs> But and then he pushed the unicorn one. Off. We're going to have to watch close. Spin oh. like crazy, but stay on the arena. I think that's kind of like a, um, a baseball player's wind-up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you call Artemis. <clears throat> Oops. Um, okay, we're going to take a short time out. Her, yeah, we've got a slight repair to make here. Okay. This will be a good time for a commercial. <laughs> this exciting match is being brought to you from the University of Northern Iowa in beautiful Cedar Falls, Iowa. It is a classic spring day outside. Sunny, a little bit windy, because as you know, Iowa is the leader in use of wind power here in the United States. That doesn't mean we make the most. Texas has the, has, uh, the claim to that because Texas is so big. Um, but we use the most per people. And so over 30% of our electricity is generated by wind power here in Iowa. And now we've got a wonderful opportunity to use that electricity for transportation. We're really promoting electric vehicles so that instead of spending money out of the state for gasoline, we can just use that uh, electricity to make our cars go. And I came to you today in an electric Volt. Okay. So I'm doing, I, I'm trying to practice what I preach. All right, and I'll interject that we did a little, what used to be called bailing wire and chewing gum repair. Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the scoop of Artemis. So we've got the scoop back on, and three, two, one, go. Okay, we may want to start the timer. All right, we've got a timer going right now. <clears throat> yeah, that's a definite do -si do very interesting. That changed Artemis a bit. Artemis has got a little bit more push. I, he was pushing uh, Unicorn I a little bit more. Changing. It is changing. I think it's changing. It is changing. We're getting close to the edge. Unfortunately, every time they spin, Artemis gets a little closer too because he seems to be more elongated. Well, okay. Is it changing? Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh. Wow, I, I there's another one to put on for the best yeah. unicorn. Yeah, that is yeah. changing. So that one is, it is changing. Artemis, the edge. He Unfortunately, the other every time they off. spin, Artemis gets a little closer and too. Let's see those replay on that. No, I because don't think he you're seems to be more that. elongated. Artemis pushed. The other robot was backing okay. up. Okay. And you're not going to be able to change it. Touchy first. Yes. Okay. Just to oh. He wasn't off. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to be technical about it. You know, he's still on the white <laughs> ring there. He's not well, off. That, no, but that's not the one where it, 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 it's much later where it oh, gets resolved. Oh, it's later than this? Okay. Oh, yeah. So keep going. It's when he's on the other side and here. Okay, and now we get him over to the edge, and yeah. he pushes yeah. there. There we go. <laughs> that, I, I don't know. I don't. That looked like Artemis to me. I don't know. Artemis touched off first. No, Artemis pushed him off. Artemis, Artemis was in pushed the other Artemis robot off, was but in the control. other robots fell so slowly that Artemis, being faster, okay. hit the end. Okay. Does think, that matter? And I don't think that should be because a Because Artemis is in control. Yeah, Artemis was in control. Anybody yeah. want to offer a, a second opinion? Mike? Ethan? What do you say? Yeah, I say Artemis well, won. No, Artemis lost. Artemis was underneath Unicorn. Yeah, but it's only um, because he's so good, so not close, because he's bad. Say. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. You want to do over? Yeah, it was incredibly close. I can't say. <laughs> yeah, I say do over. I say do over, too. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah, it's, one, it's 
It's, um, it's one to zero. Oh, okay. We just want to prolong the action, that's yeah. all. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that one was decisive. <laughs> there wasn't much doubt. That was Artemis <laughs> so for sure. So Artemis wins with two Yukos. Artemis has the match. <clears throat> and and now, now Unicorn and El Matador still have to settle their hash to see who gets to face Artemis. Okay. Unicorn and El Matador. And being how wild and woolly this is, we don't know really who's going to win, even though El Matador is a powerful robot. I think next year we should get some Matador music. Yeah. <laughs> we want a little bit of opera. We, we, want we need Mitch to class to, this up a little. We little want music Mitch on. to come back and play the theme from Rocky. Oh, Rocky, okay. Rocky, right? <laughs> da, da, All right. Da, da. Unicorn versus El Matador. Three. Oh, are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Oh, oh, see, there you go. Oh, I don't... <laughs> All right. Two competent robots, and they both drove off the edge. But, but Matador went first. <laughs> El Matador's too fast for his own okay, good. Okay, so that you one call went to unicorn. unicorn. Okay, three, two, one, go. You could argue the same way we did last time. He was so good. Yes. He shouldn't. Ah. Oh. oh, there we go. The now Yuko it's El one and one. All right. El Matador. Yes. One and one. He shouldn't. Ah. <clears throat> so this is it to enter the final. But this is not going to change anything about who won the visitor's bracket. Even if El Matador wins and then he beats uh, Artemis, we're still going to give the award to Artemis. Oh, okay. Because that's the rules. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Maybe we should change the rules. We can discuss that. Mike, you, you can ponder on that one, too. Are you ready? <laughs> Three. Two, one, go. Uh, and Matador all right. pushes Unicorn off. Al Matador goes to the finals. Yes. And Unicorn would be third place in this competition, but El Matador has this match. And now we go to the finals. Clear cut. This is a redo in a sense, Pat because these are the two robots that fought in group one final. Okay, Artemis and El Matador. And we are nearing the event, ending the event of Three, 12 two, one, SmackDown. Go. Whoa. And uh, <laughs> Artemis pushed Matador right out of the ring. That Fire. was pretty dramatic. He was a little bit confused by the flag, though. I think Artemis went off to the side because of the flag. A little bit. But it proved effective anyway. Either that or Matador had moved. It might have been better for Matador in that, place, play, in that case to have a head-on collision. Not yeah. sure. Well, we'll try it again. I think El Matador needs to be right where he can get square. Three, two, one, go. On Artemis. Oh. oh. All right, that's it. Okay. So. I think Artemis stayed on longer than Matador. You go and match to Artemis. Uh -huh. That is the same as we had in the group one final. Yep, Artemis first. So we first. are going to end the tournament. From the viewpoint of the, of the, uh, the software, the Shalonge bracket, I suspect they're going to say that the winner of this 
final stage should be the overall winner. But in any case, so that our supreme champion. It came out the same Artemis. anyway. Yep. Were the adversar adversary El mm -hmm. Matador, and then third place. Maybe next time. That's very nice. Unicorn. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So congratulations, Nathan. Congratulations, Ethan. Congratulations, Mitch, and to all the other competitors. This ends the 12th UNI Mini Sumo Smackdown.